Hey, hey, hey there. Welcome to Ask Me Monday. I am Vicki Howell, and this is episode number 125. And I, as always, am thrilled to be starting out another week with you, my crafty community. So as always, uh, we tell each other where we're watching from. I am here with you from my studio in Austin, Texas, and how we kind of filled our creative well over the weekend. So I really firmly believe that it's crucial to take time to um, to be creative, even if it's really difficult and you can only knit a couple stitches or paint a stroke or play a couple of notes or whatever it is, I believe that if we're creative, it opens up something inside of us and that when we're open, we listen to each other and it's all good. It's the beginning at least. So what I worked on over the weekend is uh, step outs for today's tutorial, which I'll talk about in a second. And then I um, Gosh, I'm not sure I did much. Oh, yes, I also made a project for a video that I'm going to be doing on Wednesday on my Facebook page. So please follow my Facebook page and my Instagram page um, at Vicki Howell. I'll be posting a picture of what that project. It's another val Valentine's Day themed project. Um, so please let me know and your community know in the comment section. I love when you share links to other tutorials. They don't have to be mine. Um, anything that inspired you over the weekend, please post it there, even if you have to come back after the live video. And speaking of live, if you are watching me here at uh, 12 p.m.-ish central time, um, please comment, um, I mean, comment anytime, but please talk to each other and share. Um, if you share, the algorithm picks it up, especially if we're live. If you're watching later, please do exactly the same thing because it helps people find us each way. And um, I love coming here every week to do this. And I am able to do so with the support of Knitter's Pride Knit Pro if you are outside of North America. If you don't know anything about Knitter's Pride, please delve into who they are because they're a really great company. They do tons of work to help make um, the working environment um, better for women in India. They also help fund education for women in India. And then here in the States and in Europe and beyond, they also are very supportive of female entrepreneurs like myself and designers. So Knitter's Pride in the US or all of North America, Knit Pro elsewhere. All right, today, since it is finally, or it was over the weekend, finally uh, warm and, or cold enough rather to wear knitwear, it was like all of the knitwear, like I just get my, I went to Pilates and people were laughing at me and they were like, did you make that? Did you make that? And I said, I know, I just, I got so excited. Um, so I got to finally wear the wrist warmers that I just posted um, that I made for my friend, Amy Small from Knit Collage's pattern. I got to wear those. I got to wear my Across the Pond cowl, which was the January Yarnier project. It was a good time. So what I thought I would do is lean into this cold weather thing. And honestly, I mean, I get it. It's like cold weather here in Austin. It got down to like maybe the 30s. I know that's nothing for some of you. Um, and also, thank you. I see some of you are sharing. Deborah, you're always so supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Donna, for sharing. Um, so it made me sort of th start thinking about how we can use knitwear other than the obvious for warmth or rather how we can make it warmer. Well, layering, of course, but also what are the warmest stitches? So today's uh, topic is the top three warmest stitches that you can knit and crochet. So if you're a knitter, I've got a couple of them for you. Crochet, I've got one too. I'll alternate so everybody, some of you are happy um, and we'll go from there. So all you need for this project is any yarn and corresponding needles. For one of the projects, they will need to be either circular, or I'm sorry, techniques, they will need to be circular or double pointed needles, and I will get into that. So today what we are going to cover is fisherman's rib, uh, double knitting, and the crochet thermal stitch. So get ready to get cozy, and we are about to get the maximum amount of warmth from our knit and crochet wear. All right, um, I'm going to flip the camera around and get started. Just a quick uh, couple more hellos. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Cindy in Denver. Uh, Sandy was in Illinois. Oh, they're getting, they're expecting another six inches of snow, so you'll be able to, to have something super warm to work on. Um, and Laura is saying that she met, she's been able to make three things. 
my knitters and crocheters and hopefully all of the crafters watching are really taking advantage of that cuddle in and um and work on things. Oh, Heidi is wearing um, the Koigu head, headband. She got Koigu from another Yarnier box. So super, super fun to see all of this. So please don't forget to share links. And please make sure that you click on the bell to be notified for these videos. Some people, I've, I've read that some are not getting notified. So if you'd like to be notified when I go live, either here on Facebook or later on YouTube, please make sure that you follow and click notifications. All right, now for reals, I'm gonna flip the camera around. So, talk amongst yourself. You get a little glimpse of my dirty office. And we are set up. So I am going to start with Fisherman's Rib today. So, Fisherman's Rib is the ushiest, gushiest, most delightful of ribs that there ever was. It looks a lot like brioche stitch. It's less complicated, way, 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 way less complicated than brioche stitch, but it gives you that really thick, sproingy fabric. And then of course, I'm also, you know, if you also couple it with a super bulky yarn, this is um, Valley Yarn Super, uh, super wash bulky, and this is in one of my colors, Castaway Coral. Um, that even makes it squishier. So I am, I've got, this is the easiest of the techniques that I'm going to show you. So I've already got most of it worked um, and I'll talk you through it. I am using, uh, for this demonstration, I am using my Knitter's Pride Ginger Interchangeable Set. I use them for pretty much everything. You do not need to use circulars if you don't like. I prefer to use them at all times. I find them to be easier on the wrists. So, wrists, not risks. <laughs> so with whatever size needle and whatever corresponding yarn. And I've written out these patterns at vickihell.com. So I will post a link later in the show notes, but also you can just get the there. Your first round is you wanna cast on in any method that you choose an even amount of stitches. And then the setup row, or row one, is just purl straight across. Okay, so you all know how to do that. So I'm going to just start with row two. So for row two, you want to purl, whoops, one, and then you want to knit the next stitch, but instead of the traditional rib where you would knit in the loop or any stitch, you want to knit in the stitch below. So you're going to poke your needle through the little, the center hole that's created by that knit stitch below knit into it, and that creates the heavier fabric. So purl one, Debbie's saying that her setup row is different. There are different ways to create this stitch. My setup row was, was purl all the way. It really doesn't make a huge difference. I, let me just stop and show you. I just like to have that um, more stable edging, and I also found that for binding off later, it, um, it made less inconsistencies, but you should absolutely do whatever you get the best um, results from. Okay, so purled one, I'm gonna knit the next one in through that center root loop. And that's all you do all the way around. Rita's asking if it can be worked in the round, it absolutely can. Okay, so you'll just do that all the way around. And I just wanna show you what you're doing is you're creating this thicker fabric because it's got double loops on it. I also suggest going up a needle size. Well, it depends on your yarn, but swatch it for sure. And that's all you will do all the way across. And that is until you get to the last two stitches. Of which you will purl purl two. Then you flip your work over and you do exactly the same thing. Purl one, knit one through the stitch below, all the way across to the last two, purl two. You just repeat that one row until you get your piece to be as big as you would like. All right, that is one of our top three warmest stitches down, Fisherman's Rib. And for those of you just tuning in, um, 
We are focused today on the warmest, the top three warmest stitches to knit and crochet. This makes a thicker rib than a traditional rib because of the double loops that you get by knitting that knit stitch in the stitch below. Okay, so our next, next up we have, this one's for the crocheters. We've got, it's called the thermal stitch. So for this, stitch you'll just chain whatever amount that you want i i chained 14 um, and again the patterns are all written out at vickihowell.com and you would just single crochet in the second stitch and all the way across like you normally would if you were working plain old single crochet okay this is where it's different so i've worked that one row looks like this and again i'm using really thick yarn um, and this is a knitter's pride dreams hook now for this stitch, I absolutely recommend going up, I, I would say go up two sizes, but you know, crochet is so um, subjective on gauge that you kind of just have to check it out for yourself. All right, so we chain one as we normally would. Now normally what we would do for a regular single crochet is we would turn the piece around like this. You can still do this for this stitch, but it's I find that it's easier if you work along the back side of the piece. So this chain one for this particular swatch is going to count as your first single crochet. Now, you're going to insert the hook in the next stitch, but only in the back loop. So that's this one. This is why I like these dream hooks because they're really pointy and it makes this part so much easier. Then you are also going to insert it through the chain from that first row below. So now you're gonna have three loops on your stitch, you're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So what you're doing is you're single crocheting, but you're single crocheting those two loops together. For the, um, I see a question from Curl Kim, what kind of yarn this is. This is Super Valley, I'm sorry, this is Valley Yarn Super Bulky Super Wash, and this is in my one of my colors with my color collection. Okay, so you are, all you're doing is you're going through the back loop, so normally we would go under both loops, correct? For a single crochet, through the back loop only, and we're also catching the parallel bar, which was the chain from the row below, also. And we're single crocheting them together. And what that is doing, why that's creating such a thick fabric, is it's only really, it's really sort of creating kind of a tube. So it's folding the, the material, the fabric over. Now that also means the this stitch does take a long time before you see any real results because you're only going up about a half of a stitch's height each time. Okay, so you would just continue that all the way to the end and then turn as normal. But I wanna show you what it looks like after you work a bit of it. Look how thick this is. Look at that, it's like, it's like a thick old piece of bread. This is, you can see how there's not a lot of drape. I went up, I normally would use a L hook and I am in a 12, I'm using a 12 millimeter and it's still pretty, pretty taut. This would be a great stitch for a hot pad. If you wanted to it for a garment, I would go up at an even bigger, to an even bigger hook. But look at the, the girth of this stitch pattern. It is so, so thick and cozy. Okay, so I wanna show you how you'll work the, the rows after you've gotten past that initial chain. So I finished, and this is what the, the end of this row looked like, and you can see there's a little tiny bit of a step. We're gonna chain one. And again, that first stitch counts as the first single crochet. So now we are going to continue, we're going to work in the back loops always for the stitch, so that's this one. And then we work in the unworked loop, so it'll be the closest parallel bar that you see from the row below. So technically that would be the front loop, but it gets confusing if you think of it that way. So I just go to the, or I think it does, to the nearest parallel bar. And you single crochet them together. And once again, we are crocheting the thermal stitch, the warmest crochet stitch in the land. And again, this is why I like this really pointy hook, this Knitter's Pride Dreams, because you really have to get under there. So technically, 
right now, if we were working traditional single crochet, we would be holding the piece like this. You absolutely could, could work it like that, but it would require kind of going back and forth like this. So I really think, at least while the, the piece is manageable enough to hold, that it works better to just kind of work on the back side of your work. And you would just continue that all the way to the end. That's all there is to it. And you can work this stitch. This is single crochet. But this same method will work with the other, whoops, with the other height stitches. So I encourage you to experiment with it. It would be a really, really, really heavy garment. So go up several hook sizes if you're going to attempt that. I really think it would be better for a rug, for a trivet, or possibly for a very, very warm blanket. And that is, you know what, I'm at the end. So actually I wanna show you, cause the end, as always in single crochet, finding that last stitch, I always recommend that you count your stitches at the end of every row. But the, at, it can be a little fussy finding, so you're gonna kinda just jab it in and see where, let's see where the closest little parallel bump is. And it looks like it's there. Again, I'm really glad I have a pointy hook. And that is the very last one. And that is the repeat row. So you would just repeat that row that I just showed you for as long as you'd want the piece. And you can really see here how the height of the stitch is only the height of half a stitch because of the way it worked. Alrighty. So that is number two of our top three warmest knit and crochet stitches. This next one, I'm gonna show you the, the last step first for a second, just so you can see what we're doing. And then the next thing that I'm going to be showing you is how to double knit using two colors. So let's get started. Now the first thing, this one I actually wanna show you the cast on for. You can absolutely cast on, there's multiple ways to do it. If you would like your bottom stitch it, your bottom edge to be all one color. You can cast on in one color, then join the other later. There's also a fancy cast on message that you can absolutely Google. I like the look of, I'll show you what we're going to be doing, the braided double color cast on. And it's really easy if you know how to do the long tail cast on. So for double knitting with two colors, you're going to create a tail, but unlike with traditional long tail cast on, you don't need to worry about how long it is for how many stitches. And I'll show you why in a second. Just enough that you can weave it in later. All right, so now I've moved on to, I'm working with my Marbles DPNs. I mentioned at the beginning of this, to, of this video how one of the techniques you needed to use either circulars or double pointed needles, this is the one. And I will show you why in a second. I have several step outs for this one, so I'll be switching back and forth on circulars and double pointed needles just so you can see um, the difference. There's not really any, but just so you have um, a way to think about it. Okay, so you want to You want to cast, or I'm sorry, you want to tie a slip knot and place it on your needle. Now, your first color here is going to be your color B. Your second color is color A. I know that's confusing, but it'll make sense in a, in a second. So all that you want to do is you want, these will also count as your first two stitches. So we just have, so this is my Moon Tower Mustard, and this is, oh, this is Superwash. Uh, this is also Valley Yarn Superwash, but this is Worsted. And this is their pink, and I don't, I think it's just called pink, but forgive me if I don't know the name. All right, so we are going to go ahead and hold our yarn how we always would if we were doing a long tail cast on. So that means separate the two, the two strands. Now this is why it doesn't matter that, what the length of the tail is, because we're actually not using the tail to cast on, we're using the two balls of yarn. Now, whatever color yarn is in your pointer finger is the color of the loop that is going to go onto the needle. So I always remember it by thinking, point me in the right direction, all right? 
So since I have a pink one, a pink loop for my last stitch, I know that I want gold next. So I'm, or mustard. So I'm going to go ahead and sweep through like I normal, normally would under the pink and grab that gold. And that's my next stitch. Okay, but now I want a pink stitch because I'm alternating. So that means I need to swap them. So I just cross them, reset up, and do the exact same thing, but with the opposite color. So I go under the gold and I grab that pink. All right, now I wanna switch again, so I'm gonna cross it again. And I'm going to grab the gold. And what this is doing is I'm intentionally crossing the bottom so that I get kind of a braided look while also alternating colors. All right, so you're just going to do this for as many stitches as you'd like to cast on. You need a lot of stitches when you're working in this pattern because you're creating two pieces of fabric at once. For the swatch that I have at vickihowell.com, I believe I said 24, but it doesn't really matter as long as it is it as it is a multiple of two. Okay, so these were the Dreams double pointed needle, or marbles, excuse me, Knitter's Pride marbles. Okay, so after you Oh wait, this is the first step. You know what? I'm sorry, I'm incorrect. I was gonna use this as my next step out. Okay, so after you've gotten all your stitches cast on, you're going to flip it over. And now you'll see what I said at the very beginning earlier, or not the very beginning, but of this particular tutorial, was that your first color was gonna be color B and your second color is color A. That's because you ended with color A, so when you flip it over and you're at the beginning of your round, your A is set up and ready to go. All right, so you'll see that you have two strands hanging. From this point on, you'll never work with two colors at the same time again. You'll only work with one color per round. And what you're doing is you're actually, this is the reason that we need these double pointed needles or a circular needle. You're actually going to work each row twice-ish because you're going to be working the knit row of one side and then working the purl row of the opposite side. Well, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so this, the first thing that we do on row one is we are going to, with color A, which is the pink, knit one. Then we're going to slip the next stitch, the gold stitch, because we always slip the stitches of the color that's not our working yarn, but we are going to do that with our yarn in front. So like this. Then we, then we put the yarn back in its place and we knit the next one, put it in front, slip it, and so on and so on. Now the reason that we're moving the yarn in front is because on this side, if we were working a knit one, purl one rib, which is essentially what we're doing, this, what would come after the knit stitch would be the purl stitch, right? So there would be a bar of fabric in front of there. So that's what this, that's what this, yarn around the stitch is mocking. All right, so you would just do that all the way to the end. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the other step out even though I could use that. All right, so now, and these look so dark, but they're actually blue. All right, so now what you've got is you've got your needle. Let me just stop and show you that cast on again. Look at how pretty that cast on is. It looks like a braid, it's intentionally twisted. All right, so we've worked row one. So we, we'd knitted all of them with the pink, slipping all our gold stitches. But now you'll notice that you've got your, your pink working yarn over here, but you still have the, the mustard all the way over here. So if you flipped it around, it still wouldn't be correct. So what we need to do for round for row two is slide the stitches back. So you always know that if you have a long strand, not the tails, but a long strand on either side, that you have to slide to start again. All right, so you slide to the opposite. And then from here, we'll be working with B. And 
and this is not necessarily set up correctly. You know what? This step out is not set up correctly. I apologize, so let me go back to this one. All right, slide over and let's work with B. Oh, live video, I just love it. Okay, ready? So we are going to now start by slipping this first stitch because we're not working with the pink, but this time we want to slip with the yarn in back because this, what we're going to be doing next is work a purl stitch. So this would have been mocking our knit stitch. So we purl the next stitch with B, move the yarn back again, slip the next stitch, I just realize I'm working with two different needles, but they're the same size, so it won't matter. Purl the next stitch, yarn in back, slip. So just remember, you only work the stitches of the color that's in, that your working yarn is, and you slide, or slip rather, all of the stitches that are not in your working color. All right, let's get this out of the way. So that was row two. Now at this point, finally, <laughs> you will have both of your working yarns at, on the same side, so you now may turn. All right, you may have noticed that I moved over to a circular needle. I just wanted to show you how it would work on this. This is a also from the Ginger's Interchangeable Set. It does not matter what length because we are not working in the round. You just need to be able to slide the stitches. Okay, so now it is time to work with our color A again, which is our pink. So, we want to slide the gold with the yarn in back, because this would be a knit side for the gold, or the mustard rather. And then you're going to purl the next one. All right, so we're gonna slide, slip rather, Purl the next one. Just get this out of the way. So we're going to slip the gold, purl. So essentially, we're repeating row two, we're just doing it with a different color. And you just do that all the way to the end. You get the idea. All right. So then you will be in a place, and now I'm gonna bring the big one back, where your yarn is at opposite sides. So this is the big one. Now I also wanted to show you what's happening is you're creating two different pieces of fabric. Isn't that neat? So, and I also wanna to talk to you about carrying up. I wanna show you what happens. If you do not twist on the side, which you could actually intentionally do this and create a pocket, that might be really cool for a water bottle, but I'll show you how you, the proper way to do it I'll have to show you when I got to the other end, is to wrap the yarn along the side. All right, so this is a big mushy-gushy one, super warm. And this is the last row of the row repeat. So now we have B, our A is on the opposite side. So we've, I would have ended here, I would slide my work down to the opposite side. Now I've got my B, I want to knit the first stitch, and then I want to move the yarn in front and slip the other stitch, the pink stitch. So again, it might seem like a lot, but really, whoops, I just, and this is what can happen when you're not paying attention. If you ever see that you have two colors in a row, two of the same color in a row, you know that you need to undo it and go back because you only want to knit or purl the stitches, so work the stitch that is attached to your working ball of yarn. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row just so I can show you what I meant about the sides. I meant to do that earlier, so make sure I get to do that. Oh, it looks like we've got Murthy watching from Cumberland, Ontario. Nice to see you. And Sheila's watching us. Great seeing you again, Sheila. There's something super satisfying about creating two pieces of fabric at the same time, especially on this thick yarn. Okay, 
So, oops, there's one more stitch I didn't see. All right, so that was the end. that's the end. That's the four stitch pattern, this four row stitch pattern. And you would just continue those four rows. Oh, Belinda from Northern Ireland, so happy to have you here. Welcome. Um, so that is what you would repeat in a, until the piece is as big as you'd like. This would be great for a sweater, for a hat, for a scarf, anything that you wanted to be reversible. Look at how cool the, the braided edging looks if you're into that. Um, I just wanted to make one more point before I flip the camera around because that is it for double knitting. What you want to do is you want to make sure that whatever your working color would be, and we would be starting row one again, so it would be A. You want to make sure that you take it and you put it under what the opposite color is. And what that's going to do is lock it in place so that you don't have the openings like we did on the other side where I hadn't done it. So you want to make sure that that fabric gets wound together. And so to do that, whichever, I'm just going to say it one more time, whatever your working yarn is, you bring it under the yarn that's on hold so that it locks it into place. And that, my friends, is all for that. I'm gonna flip the camera around. Okay, so we did it. We covered two knitting and one crochet stitches that from what I could find, and if you can find other ones, I would love it if you'd put it in the comment section, are the top three most warm stitches, the warmest stitches for our winter wear. Um, they are great for a multitude of things. Um, I love Fisherman's Rib, which was the first one for scarves and cowls, and it would be so fun as a big, chunky um, cardigan. The single crochet thermal stitch, again, would be a great trivet. If you went up a hook or two size, it could also work as the warmest blanket ever. A rug would be great as well. And then double knitting, I mean, Really, the possibilities are endless. I would love a blanket in this. I would love a jacket in this. I would love a cowl that I could wear one color one day, one in the other. You could do an eternity scarf where you seam it later so that you see half of it. Can't really do it. It's not a long enough piece, but half the color on one side and half on the other. Just really fun. So if you would like to practice these swatches, you can just go to vickihowell.com and um, I have written them all out and please don't forget to pin them so that you have them for later if you are on Pinterest. I do that, I always kick myself when I forget so I thought I would start reminding you. All right, that is all um, I have for you today. I will be off next week. Um, it is actually a school holiday, so doing the family thing. So I will be back the week following that, Monday, 12 Central, right here on Facebook. Um, if you have not already, please refresh your feed. We have a new episode of the Craftish Podcast, and you can find it wherever you find them. Alexa, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, wherever. This episode, I actually spoke to, I departed a little bit from the usual, and I spoke to a personal trainer and um, body image specialist, and she just talked about how we as women, um, for ourselves and for our daughters, can really work on a positive um, body image, and it's really great. Her name is Sarah. Hayes Coomer, and you can find that, again, it's the Craftish Podcast. Also, um, uh, let's see, da, 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 da. oh, the last thing, Yarnier, Yarnier Sales. I am wearing the project, one of the projects for February right now, and I love it. There's a crochet one, too. It's right here. Sales for February Yarnier, the whole theme of of the box is love will open on the 13th at 12 central time so so if you're at all interested we will sell out because there aren't a ton of openings this month please go to yarnier.com you can add your name now and you'll be one of the first to be notified when we go live and you can nab it and we're going to make a long together all right that's it for me this week at week thank you so much as always for starting your week with me if there's anything that you would like to see demonstrated on a future episode of ask me monday please put it in the comments section and also don't forget to check out our sponsor knitters pride or knit pro all right thanks everyone have a great rest of your week